Now, MIDI, as you may already know, can send more than just note information. It can also send MIDI controller data, which we'll look at shortly, and it can also send MIDI clock information. Using the MIDI clock, Cubase can relay the tempo of the project to an external device, and this in turn will keep that device in time with your project. For this example, I'm going to show you another device, the Korg Volca sample. Now, you'll notice that there's no USB connection here, so I'm going to have to use 5-pin MIDI. This time, I'm going to go from MIDI in on the Volca to the MIDI out on my sound card. And then I'll make the audio connection using a mono interconnect cable. Next, I'm gonna create an audio track, and we don't need to use external instrument tracks here uh, as we won't be using any MIDI. And I'll select input four. And if I press play on the Volker sample, you should hear a 16 step sequence that I prepared earlier. Now, currently this pattern device is playing on its own independent tempo, completely separate from the Cubase project. To fix that, I'm gonna to go to Transport and then Project Synchronization Setup. And you see there's a whole bunch of different options here, but it's only this bit at the bottom that we're interested in. And using this panel, I can decide where Cubase is gonna send the MIDI clock to. And you see that all of my devices are available as options here, but I'm gonna choose Steinberg UR44. You also have some options here relating to how the clock is sent. So MIDI clock follows project position will attempt to lock any pattern devices to the location of the playhead in your project. Now, if you're dealing with something like a 16 step sequencer, it's not really that important. It's more to do with if you're syncing an entire song arrangement on an external device to your door project. And I actually tend to find that you get weird results with this enabled, especially when you're working in a cycle or a loop. Always send start message will attempt to start any pattern sequences that are connected, although I've tend to find that they will start regardless of whether this is enabled or disabled. Lastly, send MIDI clock in stop mode just means that the tempo is always going to be relayed to the device, even if the sequencer isn't playing, and I like to leave this on. Now if I press play in the sequencer, the Volker sample should play automatically and in time with the project. Now, most pattern-based devices will allow you to store multiple patterns in memory. So with this method, I could alternate between the two patterns that I have and record over the course of these four bars. Alternatively, I could make use of the hardware aspect of this and just perform on the device while I'm recording, for example, taking sounds in and out using the mute function uh, or perhaps resequencing as I go. Some devices may even allow you to automate pattern selection using program change or MIDI controller data, but that's not an option here. So for now, let's take another short break, and then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use another type of MIDI data to control synth parameters from within the sequencer.